Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion and today I want to show you how to make this optical illusion text effect. So a pretty interesting and unusual look and it's a lot of fun to do. So let's get going. OK, for this project, let's go with 19, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second and a duration of 15 seconds. And the first thing I want to do is to come over to my assets folder and bring in my image. Now, this is from pexels.com. I will give you a link in the description. So the thing I need to point out is that the original was a vertical format image like this. And I've used the new extend function in Adobe Photoshop to widen out the edges. So the image you'll see in the download link won't look the same as this. So the first thing we want to do is to make a new group at the top here. And I'm going to come to Object and Generators and I'm going to look for Grid. So first of all, let's make it nice and big. I'm going to go with 5000 by 5000. I'm going to make it a very obvious color or a color that's very obvious to me. You can pick whatever you want. Turn the background opacity down to nothing. Let's have maybe a line width of about six. And let's go with a width and height of 240 by 240. I think is going to be good enough for this. So what we want to do is we want to take this group that's got our grid in it and come over to properties, open up the rotation, and we want to rotate the group appropriately for our image of the man on the bench. So there's a number of things we can deduce from this shot that'll get us close to where we need to be. The first thing to think about is our angle of view onto this floor from the camera position. And I reckon that to be about negative 60. So if we enter that, that does feel about right in terms of the overall perspective. So the other thing to think about is the angle of these lines here as they're presented to us. So the, the in other words, the Z rotation of the grid. And that looks to me to be roughly speaking 45 degrees. If you can see how these lines come off like that. So let's try that for the Z. So we can go with Z 45. So that's starting to look OK. The thing is, there's a lot more kind of perspective distortion on this that we can't actually achieve with rotation. But what we can do is adjust the shear to get these lines to run correctly. So what we're going to do is adjust the X shear as you see, as I adjust that X shear, we can get everything to line up. And I think something like negative 13 is about right for that. 14, 13, 14. It doesn't have to be too perfect. And we are going to make some slight adjustments as well anyway. But I think that's pretty good to get us going. So I'm going to call this group master source. And what we can now do into this group, turn off that grid. We don't need to see that anymore. We can take our text tool. And I'm going to type on bench. I'm going to make it nice and big. I think I'm going to go with something like 700 for that. And then you'll notice that if I select my text and we just move it around like this, if I move it on Y, we're actually moving it backwards and forwards along that axis there because of how we've set up our group. And then I can move it this way on X to get it to line up like that. I've probably overdone that size, haven't I? Let's go for 600 instead. So let's just move that along like that, maybe move it to here. So it's sort of lining up pretty well with the lines, bearing in mind that because I've used Photoshop to extend this and AI is really pretty awful at extending lines, it's not going to be absolutely geometrically perfect anyway. But what we can actually just do is I think give this a little bit of a nudge on the Z rotation like that. Negative one and then just move it a bit like that. So it's lining up pretty well, I think. So let's duplicate that text and let's type sitting and then let's just move this up on Y, cross on X and then we can just maybe scale this down so it's sort of sitting like that. Maybe we can actually just adjust that baseline exposition here. You can use this offset and this baseline instead of using the position if you want. So let's duplicate this again. Let's just move this up even further to here. Move that across. You can see how the perspective is going off a little bit here. 
let's just adjust that as we go there. So negative three maybe for that is it's probably about right. So then let's just edit this text to say old man. Maybe just move that over a bit like that. So what we can now do is we can take this group and we can make a clone of it. So right click, make clone layer, and we can turn off that master source group. And what we can do is apply to this group filters, stylize and extrude. And if we set the angle to 270, in other words, pointing right down, we've now got an extrusion that matches the perspective of our scene. But we don't want an extrusion. What we want is an indentation into the floor. So to achieve that, we are going to do two things. First of all, we are going to come to filters and border and stroke. I'm going to just drop that down behind the extrude. That's very important. For the color, I'm just going to pick my floor color like that. And what I want to do is I want to hide source. And if you look what happens then, you'll see we are seeing the inside extrusion. So then we can take this group and right click and add image mask. And we can take our master source group and add it as the mask source. You'll notice that actually that's automatically chosen it, which is kind of interesting. I think this is a new feature. I've never seen that before until now, so it probably is. Anyway, we want to make sure that we've actually populated that source well with the actual group that we want, just in case anything funky happens later on. So drop the master source into that group there. So this is now looking like it's being cut into the floor. So we can take our background here and we can clone it and we can come to filters and color and levels and just darken it down just a little bit like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that clone, right click, add image mask, and I'm going to use again my master source as the source. And then if I turn that on and off, you can see we've got a darker infill there and that's going to help with selling the effect. Now, the other thing we can do is we come up to the top here, make a new group and drop this group into it. So that's the group with our extruded indentation, as it were. We can drop the image mask onto this top group here. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Take that image mask that's on group one, stick it onto group two. And then if we come to group one properties and we turn on drop shadow, and I'm just going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here open up the drop shadow. Let's set the opacity all the way up so we can really see it. And then just blur it a bit and maybe increase the distance a little bit. So you now you'll see that with that drop shadow, you've created even more of a sense of that being a, a cut out into the floor like that. However, this is the kind of boring way of looking at it. What I decided I wanted to do instead was turn this into a bit of sort of street art. So rather than actual indentation, make it sort of stylized. And to do that, I'm going to change the extrude style to gradient. And I've got ready made a gradient that I've called whole. And you can see if we look at the gradient here that I've got some color tags here that are sort of steps like that. And as I'm sure you know, they're steps because I've set the tag interpolation to constant. But I don't want to talk about setting up a gradient here. And this is very much something where you need to be uh, choosing whatever works best for you. But I do like this more stylized look. So what else can we do? Oh, yes, we can come back into our master group. And if I grab the circle tool and just very roughly draw out a circle. I'm not going to bother too much with it because it's going to go wrong because of what's happening inside the group. So despite the fact that I was holding down the shift key, it's actually become an ellipse, which it shouldn't have become. So I'm going to set that radius to be 150. And I'm just going to move this to somewhere interesting. So down here, down here. So you see that whatever I drop into this group also inherits the properties. And that's actually quite a nice look, I think. So I'm going to clone that. Right click, make clone layer. And then just move this across on X to the opposite side. So all pretty interesting, I think. So what we can then do is we can take everything. We can make a new group at the top. We can drop everything into that new group. So I'm going to come to the end here. I'm going to set a keyframe for the position and a keyframe for the scale. I'm going to come to the first frame. I'm just going to scale it in like that. So we're much closer to the old man. I'm going to move it up on Y so he's nicely framed up. 
And that is going to give us this animation here. So we're zooming out all the way like that. So there you go. That's the effect. Pretty simply done, but it does look pretty interesting, I think. So I hope that's been useful. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon.